flowed over a nation in Jesus' name. Amen. God's going to use that in many are singing with it and they're declaring it. Amen. All right. So right now, I'd like to welcome Reverend Kenneth Mitchell uh, to the stage. But I want to say something about the Reverend. There's all sorts of stories and people's opinions about him. I want to say this. This man has stood the test of time against the church to get about the world to stand up for righteousness and do what God is calling to do. Amen. This is one of the watchmen in our country who will not stand for unrighteousness. There were many that said when he went to parliament that he should not do it and have restricted him from that day. But this is the gentleman who saved our constitution and made sure that we're still a Christian nation today. Yeah. Now I will honor him publicly and say, Sir, thank you. I've heard of the battles. Many of us will not have a clue what this family has had to go through for the gospel in this nation. To save us from so many things that we cannot always announce publicly. But I want to honor Reverend for standing so strong. And I want to ask each and every one of us to pray for him. Because as you know, he's just lost his wife. And it's been a tough time for the family. But he has said, I'm going to continue the battle until I die because I love South Africa. Amen. And it's time that we get beyond godly men and women who are actually going to bring a difference into our nation. Not those that promise stuff and deliver nothing. So right now, I'm so privileged to have Reverend here today because he carries a weight across his entire nation. And you have this caliber of authority declaring stuff over this area, stuff happens. And so I want you to listen carefully as Reverend speaks. Because he carries the word of the Lord. I want to say this. He did not just come and preach another message. You guys need to understand the caliber of people that we are dealing with. The reverend came and he says, I will not pick up a word until I'm on the ground so that God can tell me what this place needs for now. And he's been separating himself from socializing to hear what God has for you in this promise. I honor men and women of God who are not just trying to copy something or just use something, who honestly give the word of the Lord for the season and for the place that they in. So right now I'd like to welcome Reverend, thank you so much for coming. And I want to say this, he had no qualm whatsoever. When I called, he said, certainly one day, book done, I'm coming. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. And uh, Dr. Frost, thank you very much for inviting me to be in the best place to be in South Africa this afternoon. <laughs> I appreciate what God is doing in this place and I appreciate the way that has been going forth. And um, Dr. Frost was correct. And preachers have a tendency of taking messages that they preach somewhere else. When they are invited somewhere else, they take that message and they preach those. The Lord has never allowed me to do that. I go to a place not knowing what I'm going to speak about until I put my feet there. Amen. And I start praying and say, Lord, what do you have? for the people in this area. And I believe the Lord has given me a word 
that is going to be a blessing to us all. And I'm going to ask you to please turn with me um, to the book of Genesis chapter 31. We are going to look at the story of a man who was not gifted to walk in truth. There was a little bit of being a skeleton in him. <laughs> there was a bit of being a cheater in him. And uh, his name is Jacob. So I want to read from verse 11 of chapter 31. Then the angel of the Lord spoke to me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, here I am. And he said, lift your eyes now and see all the areas which live all the realms which live on the flocks are streaked, speckled, and uh, you know the light is challenging here. It's, really, it's challenging here. So I, I think maybe to save myself from making too many mistakes, let me go to 13. He said, I'm the God of Bethlehem. When you anointed the pillar and when you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land and return to the land of your family. 16. After speaking to his wives, they said, for all these riches which God has taken from my father are really ours and our children's. Now then, whatever God has said to you, do it. You know, if anybody has a wife that can say those words, whatever God has said to you, do it. I was blessed to have such a wife who believed in the word of the Lord, including when in 1985, when Pastor Bonga left South Africa for Zimbabwe, and he said to the South African team, because your passport cannot go anywhere in Africa, so your passport is useless in South Africa. So South Africans, you can stay behind, except those who are willing to lay down their citizenship in order to gain the Zimbabwean citizenship. After praying, I felt that the Lord was saying, I should do the same. And so I said to my wife, this is what the Lord is saying. He said, no problem, honey. Where you go, I will go. Let us go. We lay down our citizenship. And when we were in Zimbabwe, the Lord said, I've seen your obedience. Now can go back home. Jacob was not a, as I said, a gifted man. He was not a man who always spoke the truth. He cheated and he lied to his own father. And uh, cheated his brother, Esau, and his Esau became so angry that Jacob had to run away. He spent a number of years, actually 20 years to be exact, in his uncle's house. After 20 years of being in that place, the Lord spoke to him and said, Now return and go back home. Go back home. And when the Lord said to him, Go back home, he spoke to his wives, and his wife said, Whatever God has said to you, do it. And they prepared to go back home. Now, what happened as they prepared? Chapter 32. I'm laying the foundation from the first verse. So Jacob went out on his way, and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's help. And he called the name of that place Mahanan. Then Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau his brother in the land of sea. Then he sent to us all the donkeys and part of what he got in his uncle's house as he was a shepherd. And then the messenger went to tell his brother that Jacob is coming back home. So when the messenger went back home, he had the good news for Jacob. Verse 6. Then the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and he also is coming to meet you, 
and 400 men are with him. So Jacob was greatly afraid and depressed. Now he remember these scenes, ne? Became greatly afraid. So he divided the people that were with him and the flocks and the heads and the camels into two camps. And he said, if Esau comes to the camp, one company and attacks it, then the other company which is left will escape. Then Jacob said, O oh God of my father Hebrew, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, return to your country and to your family, and I will deal well with you. Okay, left. Deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau. From the hand of my brother. Yes, for I fear him. Twelve. For you said to me. Now, when Jacob heard that his brother was coming with 400 men, obviously he became very scared. Great afraid. So he chose to respond in prayer. I want us to look at some ingredients or the most important ingredient in his prayer. When he was fearful, he responded by turning to prayer. Now, the good question we always must ask ourselves, when we become scared, when we become afraid, how do we respond? We look back at what happened in 2020, when we had COVID in South Africa. How did the church respond? There are still churches today that are still closed, shut down since 2020, because they responded in fear. Ladies and gentlemen, when we hear the bad news, it is never a good idea to respond the way the church responded, or most of the church responded in 2020. Respond in fear. And when we respond in fear, we make wrong decisions and we start saying what the world says. There are people who said, we are going to die, we are going to die. People were writing their wills, why? Right? Because of what the world said. And we know that some of the revelation that were given was that the church did not meet. We were online for three months. March, April, May. Then in May, the Lord said, get out of the house. We got out of the house and went to a, an empty plot next to our church. We had church there. The police came twice. And the people were saying, what are you doing? Are you rebelling against government? We were not rebelling. God had said, get out. And we went out. And we had church. For three months, we were in the open. And the Lord said, it's now time to go back into the building. There were a number of churches around us that were closed for two years. I'm saying, friends, when you hear the bad news, how do you respond? Jacob responded with prayer. He was scared of his brother. So he thought the only one that can save me for my brother is the Lord himself. So he prayed. And as he prayed, he said something very important. He said, Lord, you said, you said I must go back. I'm afraid to go back. But you said I must go back and it will go well with me. So Lord, save me. The best thing to do when you pray, particularly when there is fear, when there is confusion, when you don't know what to do, is to remember the promises of God. Remember what God has said. So Jacob said, the Lord, you said twice. In his prayer, he said, Lord, you said. Lord, you said I must go back. Lord, you said it will go well with me. And I pray that you fulfill your will. So when things become difficult, we need to remind ourselves of what the Lord has said about our lives, about our families, about our cities, about our province, and about the nation of South Africa. Remember what God has said. When some people are saying we are going down, that is not what I heard God say over the years. The Lord did not say we are going down. So remember when you become afraid, don't listen to what people around you are saying. What did God say is the most important thing. Not what other people say, but what did God say. So Jacob, we want to be responded in prayer. And this afternoon I want to encourage us, brothers and sisters. 
There are things happening and there are other scary things that are ahead of us. There are other scary things that are ahead of us. The lockdown we had was just a taste of what is to come. Somebody is following the news. I'm not saying this so that anybody should be scared. I'm just saying, how is the church going to respond this time? Are we going to be scared? One of the things that Jacob did, before he prayed, he made preparations. He protected his wives. The favorite was at the back, and the, the one that he didn't like best was in front. <laughs> so that if danger comes in before on the one, that was not his favorite. The favorite one at the back. But Jacob made the preparations. And I believe one of the preparations that are needed is to raise prayer armies all over. Prayer armies all over. Armies that will not forget who they are in Christ. It broke my heart to hear preachers of faith. Preachers of faith during COVID, not talking about faith. Ladies and gentlemen, we as we prepare ourselves, we need to remember who we are in Christ. We are not Aramis Capsules. Need. We are ambassadors of Christ. The greater one is in us than he that is in the world. So when the world says we're going to sing, we're going to be like Australia, we say, no, 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 no. This is not Australia, this is South Africa. What did God say about this nation is what is important. Remember what God has said. Now, when we prepare ourselves for what is coming, we don't prepare ourselves and prepare our wills and prepare the coffins and prepare who is going to bury, look for churches for sites, bury our sites. Some people did that, unfortunately. And according to their faith, it was done unto them. So I'm saying to us, friends, what is ahead of us? Maybe let me just quickly say something about what's ahead of us. Do you know that our sovereignty as a country is threatened? There is an organization called the World Health Organization. World Health Organization, according to the Constitution, they made recommendations to nations of the world. Recommendations of what should happen. Now, they have suggested, they have requested that their constitution be amended. So that they no longer make recommendations on health issues. But what they will say becomes a mandate. What they say will become obligatory. What they are saying is, we must lose our sovereignty when it comes to health issues, we have nothing to say. They decide in New York, they decide in Germany, they decide wherever they want to make a decision. So now when they say things like this, how should the church respond? How should the church respond? Now one of the things that the church should do is something that we are doing in our church. Jesus Christ said, in Matthew 18, 18, whatever is prohibited on earth will be prohibited in heaven. And whatever is permitted on earth will be permitted in heaven. This means the church has authority. Ladies and gentlemen, I said, this means the church has authority. This means you have authority. We have declared that we will not have another lockdown in the name of Jesus. We, let's say that I say we will not have another lockdown in the name of Jesus. Otherwise, otherwise, what Jesus said was not true. Jesus said, What we prohibit, heaven will prohibit. And what we permit, heaven will permit. So I'm asking the question. KZN, believers, are you going to allow another lockdown here? Yeah. If it happens, who permitted it? I'm asking. If it happens, who permitted it? Ladies and gentlemen, government has power that God has given it, but that government, that power is not absolute. It is limited. And we as the body of Christ, can ensure that that limited government does not interfere with what the church has to do. Because the church has been given authority. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore. Go ye therefore. In the authority of Christ. In the power of Christ. Go ye and 
preach the gospel. As we talk to some people on their they say, uh, I've been accused of trying to come against the fulfillment of scriptures. They say the Bible does speak that the Antichrist is coming. The Antichrist is going to rule. And I will say to them, when is he coming? No, in the last days. When is the last days? Yeah, we are in the last days. I said, okay, let's look at God's program. Is this, is this the time for the Antichrist to be revealed? Is this the, anti, the time for the Antichrist to be revealed? I said, no. The Antichrist, I know, I read this past week that the World Economic Forum says, a Professor Schwab says we must accelerate the UN 2030 agenda. 2030 agenda. We must accelerate it. Part of that acceleration, things have three things have to happen very, very quickly. The one that happened before 2030. And I'm again I'm saying, how is the church going to respond? The one, one world government. Number two, the one, one digital currency for everybody. Number three, the one, the one world religion. The interfaith has been introduced in a number of areas. People obviously are following that. But let me say to you, friends, it is not the will of God for us to have the one world government now. It is not the will, the will of God. So what is the church going to do? How are we going to pray? Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Is it all? How is the church going to respond? Our preparation must be to raise more army warriors, more prayer warriors who stand up and pray with authority. Pray with authority. How are we going to respond? Here is the thing. Which I believe these are the two signs that have to assure us that the Antichrist should not be revealed now. In Matthew 24, 14, Jesus said, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole earth as a witness. And then the end will come. My question to you, has the gospel of the kingdom been preached throughout the whole earth? I'm asking again, has the gospel been preached throughout the whole earth? No. In Habakkuk 2, chapter 2, verse 14, it says, For the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will fill the earth, will cover the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. Now, has the knowledge of the glory of the Lord covered the whole of South Africa? I'm asking, no. So, can he come before that happens? No. Should he wants to? But how is the church going to respond? That's why I'm saying the church can say, we will not permit this thing to happen now. The Antichrist is out of time. He's ahead of his time. Hear me well. He is ahead of his time. We can say it is not going to happen now. We are refusing. The last time I spoke in parliament, the last sentence when I gave credit and honor to my wife, for I had a great wife. I had a great woman. The last thing I said, I know that the, the new world order, particularly the one world religion, has been finalized. It's now ready to be imposed on the earth, imposed upon us all. And I said, I want this parliament to know that the ACDP rejects the one world religion. I said it in parliament. Now, if the people of God can say, I will not allow anybody to say Jesus Christ is equal to all other gods. Traitors agree there. Traitors agree with them. But I'm here to say, friends, we are not expected to be traitors. We cannot betray the truth about Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So as Jesus Christ is the only one, we must detect without fear. We must detect it with confidence that Jesus has no impact. 
Jesus has no substitute. Jesus has nobody that can claim to be part of him. Now, if we do it and we say the Antichrist that wants to do it, we say no to him. Yeah. I can see some of you say, Are you serious? Are you serious? I am serious. We are given authority in Christ. And I'm asking you, friends, Jacob prepared by dividing his family. I'm saying, how are we preparing? We raise up more men and women, not only of prayer, but of faith also. Men and women who will not go according to what they see, but go according to what they believe the word of God is saying. So we have no reason to fear. When we know the word of God, when we live prayerful lives, when we remember who is in us, Eva Zarwani, fellow brothers and sisters, when we remember who is in us, do you know how much intimidation we have gone through? Where I stay, where I, where our church is. Dr. Frost has been kind to come there a few times to come and pray with us. On the evening, October 2021, 20, two years ago, there was a protest in our area. Demonstrations, people were looting, sorry, people were burning stuff, roads were barricaded. Then they said, no church, because our church was exactly at the traffic circle when that was happening. They said, no church. Friday night is our prayer, food, prayer night. So I went to church and I had to find my way around all that debris. And I said to our people, we are not going to pray inside church, we are going to pray outside. We went in, in the street. As we were doing warfare in the street, stepping on the stones and on the rocks on debris, some of them whistled for their friends to come. Their friends came out. A number of young men came out. And uh, I said to our guys, ignore them, ignore them, ignore them. So we continued with what we were doing, doing warfare in the street while they were watching us. In the second, the, high, the ground is higher. We stood on the higher ground and we made declarations. We said, on Sunday, we are going to have church. In the name of Jesus, we declare this road open. When we left, it was still the way it was. Ladies and gentlemen, they said, people were asking questions, are they really coming to church because these guys can be dangerous? I said to our church members, we have authority. I said we have authority. We can make that direction, we can speak to the heavens, we can speak to the land, and that's what we did. We have authority. That Sunday, that Sunday morning when I drove to church, the street was clean. I don't know who cleaned the street, it was open. What am I saying? I say we have authority. I say we have authority. It is time to remember what God has said about South Africa. What did God say about South Africa? Did God say South Africa is going to sink? Or did God say South Africa is going to be a model among the nations of the world? Are we going to be a model among the nations of the world? Did God say? Did God say? Nations of the world will look at South Africa. I wonder what has happened in that country. Did God say that? Let me tell you, friend. God said that. There is going to be trouble. Don't get me wrong. The few coming Wednesdays, South Africa is going to be rough. Some people have said they've seen fires. They've seen buildings on the fire. They say it's going to happen. But when it happens, forget about that. Don't worry about that. Look at what God has said. Speak what God has said. Proclaim what God has said. Walk in the street and say, in this street there will be order. In this street there will be peace. Because that is what God taught us to do. We take responsibility for our communities. Take responsibility for our streets. When it gets tough, we walk on the road and we say, Lord, your word says, every place where our fish are fed, you are giving it unto us. That is what your word says. So when it becomes tough, remember the word of the Lord. When it becomes fearful, remember what God has said. That is what Jacob did. He said, Lord, I'm scared. I'm scared of my brother. But you said, so come and save me. Come and save me. So if the buildings go on fire again, we'll say, Father, we are concerned. 
We are concerned, but I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear because God did not give me a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. I refuse to fear. I am concerned, but I refuse to fear. I declare what God has said. This country is going to have the, the most amazing and important revival is going to happen in South Africa. It's going to happen very, very soon. The amazing revival is coming. Why? Because God said so. The enemy wants us to be frightened by what you will be doing. The chaos will be causing. We are not going to worry about the chaos. We are going to pray and declare order in the name of Jesus. And when we declare order in the name of Jesus Christ, there will be order in Jesus' mighty name. Lastly, friends, let me say, I come from an area that is rough. Uh, here, definitely here, definitely not. Everything is okay. You can see everything is okay. Everything is okay. I come from an area that is rough. Where people protest and at times, actually in the 90s, they would force what people from staying away from work. They would attack you if you, if you disobey. And I said to our guys, guys, the important thing is God, when God brought us here, he said we're going to be part of the solution. So we speak solutions. We speak all that. Rather than tremble with everybody else, we say, Lord, we thank you for what you have said about our lives. What you have said about this country. What you have said about our community. So the good news, friends, is regardless of what's going to happen, South Africa will never see. The good news, South Africa will never see. South Africa is going to be a model among nations of the world. My time is up. Please stand with me. Okay, let's make a declaration. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare. I am not a bankrook. I am not a coward. I am not an animal skeptic. I am a child of God. Wash in the blood of the Lamb. I am an ambassador of Christ. And as an ambassador of Christ, I have authority in the name of Jesus. I use this authority to declare that this nation belongs to Jesus. There is no way Satan can get this nation. There is no way South Africa will see. I declare South Africa is blessed by God. I declare South Africa is going to be a blessing to nations of the world. I declare South Africa is blessed. South Africa is blessed. And therefore, we will bless the rest of the world. The world will see what God will do in South Africa. My eyes will see it. I won't see it from heaven. I'm going to be part of it. South Africa is being saved. Revival is knocking at our door. Revival is coming in Jesus' name. I declare, I will not fear. I will not fear. I will not fear. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Man, I tell you what, if you can speak of the God, say. All right. Maybe see. Stop it for a second.